Okay, let's talk about genotype and phenotype. And the genotype is, I like to think of it as, the type of genes that a person has. And not those genes, but these genes. So let's look at a person here, and let's put our, let's put a trait on there, and we'll, we'll put freckles on there. And freckles will represent with um, a big F, meaning the dominant form of the allele, for that gene is that you will have, if you get the dominant, you will have freckles. And then we'll use a big F because freckle starts with an F. And then we'll use a little f for no freckles. We don't use an N. We use the same letter so we don't get them confused as the dominant. Okay, now let's add a widow's peak onto this person. And widow's peak is dominant, even though it's not uh, actually a very common thing to see in the population. So we'll use a big W for widow's peak, and then a little w for for not having a widow's peak. And I put the little line over it here so you can tell the, the big from the little. And then let's look at the ears. And earlobes can either be attached or unattached. And then let's look at um, the thumb, a hitchhiker's thumb or a straight thumb. The hitchhiker's thumb is, is curved. And so the genes determine, that's your genotype. So, so this person has the genotype um, with these letters here. These are all the genes that they might have. And remember, you can get um, two dominant alleles, two recessive alleles, or a mixture of dominant and recessive. So the genes determine the type of phenes. Well, that doesn't really make any sense, but, but, but phenotype starts with a pH, and so does physical. So I always remember that phenotype goes with the physical expression of the genes. Now by looking at a person, looking at our person here, you, you can tell that they have the dominant, but you can't tell what their genotype is for sure. But we can tell that they have at least one dominant for these things. And if they didn't show some of those traits, or the recessive, then you would know that they had to have gotten both recessives from the parents. Because remember, for a dominant to show up, you only need one of them. The dominant covers up the recessive. But for the recessive to show up, you have to get both of them. So you can tell somebody's genotype regarding a trait if they show the recessive. But you can't know for certain their genotype if they have the dominant, because they could be homozygous dominant, or they could be heterozygous dominant. Now, these are very simple traits, and the majority of the traits um, in, the, in the human body are much more complex than this. And even these may not be as simple as we're making them sound here. But let's introduce another idea of incomplete dominance. And um, hair texture may, well, is certainly an incomplete dominance, and, it, and we can simplify it um, by just showing three possibilities. If you have both dominance, you'll have curly hair. If you have a mixture of dominant and recessive, then you have wavy hair. And if you have both recessives, then you have straight hair. This might be a, a, an oversimplification of this, but it can illustrate the point that in incomplete dominant traits, the dominant allele doesn't completely mask or cover up the recessive. It only partially covers it. And so it's the, the recessive being present actually kind of weakens the dominant. Um, Another one is the idea of codominance. And codominance is much easier to see. An example of this is blood type. And there's actually, in codominance, that means there's more than one dominant possibility. So in your blood type, there's two versions of the dominant gene, the A blood type and the B blood type. And then there's only one version of the recessive, which um, we represent with an O. So if you get the A, you have one of the dominant forms of the allele for, for blood type. If you get the B, you have the other one. So you express both of those equally, and it has to do with the, the, um, the blood cells. And if you get both Bs, then you have just the dominant B. If you have both As, you have just the dominant A. If you get the one recessive, the other dominant you have is going to show up and be present. And if you get both recessives, then you have the pure recessive. And this is important because 
you have to get the right blood type when you get a transfusion. It has to match. Your body will reject the other kind. But this is an example of codominance. Um, they're both showing up equally. So we have really, um, so we have our genotype. The genotype are the type of genes you have. The phenotype is the physical expression of those genes. And those come as either dominant or recessive or incomplete dominant or codominant.